I'd like to take a deeper look at the dual sign sawtooth generator model 158 from Red Panel by Buchla, but first some context. Before Don Buchla and Morton Sabotnik met at the San Francisco Tape Music Center in the early 60s and began to envision what became the Buchla 100, everybody in all the electronic music studios around the world were using test equipment oscillators that were either sine sawtooth generators or sine square wave generators. These populated all the electronic music studios around the world. The Cologne studio of Stockhausen, the Rai Phonology in Milan, the BBC Radiophonic Workshop with Daphne Oram, Delia Derbyshire, Brian Hodgson, and the Princeton Columbia Studios with Yushchevsky and Leunin, and variants in educational electronic labs. These oscillators used a switch from sine to saw or sine to square. There was no voltage control and pitch was done manually with either the large coarse tune knob or the fine tune knob. Here's an example of a vintage sine to square wave oscillator. It was Don Buchla and, on the East Coast, Robert Moog that simultaneously came up with control voltage to automate some of these moves. It must have been a real boon to Sabotnik, Oliveros, Sunder, everyone at the Tape Music Center in San Francisco, to be able to automate some of these moves, freeing up their hands to manipulate tape decks, filters, other things. Rather than having a switch which was an either-or proposition, you could have sign or sawtooth. Don Buchla morphed between a sign and a sawtooth, giving you many more waveforms in the process. Both main pitch and frequency modulation were also voltage controllable, opening up a whole new range of possibilities.
So as we look at the 158 dual sign sawtooth generator, we are stepping back in history. It is basically a time machine. I hope you enjoy the ride. Stay tuned for the next episode with a more complex look at this oscillator. Thank you.